Hi, this is Sarah Satch, and today I'm going to show you in our video how to make this fun Christmas sweater mug cozy. Isn't that cute? And I made these for some of my friends at Christmas. And so I decided to write the pattern down and we're using it for our second pattern for our Christmas in July videos. Isn't that adorable? So what you're going to need is you're going to need a Christmas cup. Now, Christmas mugs can be a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner like this one. But I'll show you how to make sure it fits no matter what size Christmas mug you have. So make sure you get a nice Christmas mug. You're going to need a, a couple of buttons. Now I've got some fun buttons here. You can see I put a package button here. And you're also going to need a button for back here to button on your mug sweater. So I like to use a fun festy button for the front and then just use a basic button for the back. But you can use two festives if you want. It's totally up to you. Um, you really get the pat the uh, button for the back is really needs to be about a, an inch to an inch and a half. But the other buttons are just decorative so it doesn't matter. So you can choose whatever button that you want. We're going to be using an H hook and I've got my favorite H hook here. You're going to need a needle because we have to sew the sleeves on and weave in our ends and we have to sew on a button. And you're going to need some scissors of course. And then the yarn that we're going to be using for our project today is I love this yarn in sparkle. And I'm going to be making it out of the red sparkle and trimming it with the white. Now you can use any worsted weight number four yarn for your project, Red Heart Super Saver at Christmas has a great yarn. And it works perfect as well. Any worsted weight that you want to do. And I'm going to be using red and white. And of course, you can make it in any colors that you want. At Christmas, I made some green ones as well, and they're very nice. All right, let's get started. To begin with, we're going to start by making the body portion of our mug. All right, now what we're going to start with is we're going, oops, <laughs> I went to make my slip knot and messed up there. There we go. We're going to start with chaining 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And this is the long portion. We're going to be stitching up and down and then wrapping it around. All right. Now we're going to put one half double crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each stitch across. The half double crochet works perfect for this project because you get a little bit of a chunky texture. So it looks like a nice little sweater. Now, if you want to make this uh, sweater in stripes, you certainly can. You can use variegated yarn, any colors. And they're great little gifts if you're going to have an ugly sweater party. Oh my goodness, put all kinds of buttons and things on them and make them super fun and give them out as gifts or prizes if you're having a contest for the ugly sweater party. Okay, so here's our first row. Half double crochet, we have 10 half double crochets. We're going to chain one. Chain one does not count as a stitch. Let me check to make sure what we're doing. I want to make sure I chained one. Yes. Sometimes on half double crochet, we chain two and we count it as a stitch. But on this project, we're chaining one and it does not count as a stitch. And now we're going to half double crochet in each stitch across. And if you don't know what a half double crochet is, it's you loop over once. Go through your stitch and pull a loop up where you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all three of those loops. It's a really great stitch because sometimes, like I've said in the past, if your double crochet is too tall and your single, cra single crochet <laughs> is too short, the half double crochet is the perfect fit. And it really is one of my favorite stitches to do. All right, so we've got 10 
half double crochet as soon as I put this one in that last double half double crochet chain one does not count as a stitch and turn and we're going to do this for 18 rows of half double crochet and I've already got one done here so you don't have to sit and watch me half double crochet for a while so here we have 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 rows of half double crochet and isn't that pretty I love how this yarn has a sparkle and I also love the way this looks now what we're going to do is we're going to start decreasing in order to make this portion of our little sweater. We're going to decrease down and make our buttonhole. So turn it this way and what you're going to do is we're going to stitch two half double crochets together and how we do that is we yarn over, we go in the first stitch and pull a loop up, go in the next stitch and pull a loop up and we'll have four loops on our hook, yarn over and go through all four of those loops. And I do suggest when you're going through all four of those loops that you loop a little bit loose so that you can get through there. Then we're going to half double crochet across. Oops. <laughs> Lost my loop. There we go. One, two, three, four. Now we, lit, we stitched our first two together, so that was one, two. And then we're going to stitch across until we only have two loops left. So we should have six, seven, eight was our first one. And then we're going to stitch our last two together. So that's the first two together, six half double crochets, and then we're going to stitch the last two together. And then we're going to yarn over, go through the first stitch. Now we're going to go through the next stitch and pull a loop up. We'll have four loops on our hook. Yarn over and go through all four. And that gave us two decreased stitches. So now we only have eight stitches across and we're gonna do the same thing. Yarn over, go through the first loop, yarn or first stitch, yarn over, go through the next stitch, pull your loop through all four. Then we're gonna half double crochet in the next four stitches. There's one, two, three, four, then we're going to stitch these last two stitches together, yarn over, go through, through the first stitch, now we're going to go through the next stitch, we've got four loops on our hook, yarn over and go through all four. And now we only have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. We went from ten to eight to six. We're going to do the exact same thing, yarn over, stitch the first two together, go through all four. Now we're going to stitch just in two stitches, one, two, and we're going to stitch those last two together, one, two, and go through all four. Now we only have, we're going to turn and now we only have four stitches. We're going to do this one more time because we want to end up with, um, let me make sure. No, oh no, that's correct. We want the four stitches. I was thinking two. We don't want to decrease any more. We want four stitches. So we're going to just half double crochet in those four stitches. One, two, three, four chain one and turn. All right, we're going to do this one more time. Half double crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet, and half double crochet. Now we're going to chain four, I believe. Let me make sure. <clears throat> we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And this is going to be our button loop. So we're going to turn again and we're going to join this chain three to the last half double crochet over here and pull it through and tie off. There we go. Good thing I have my notes here. I'd be changing the pattern as we go. All right, now we're going to weave that in and we'll do that with our needle. 
But I want to talk to you a little bit about size. <clears throat> you can see here we have, uh, it comes down, looks like a pop bottle top. We've got our straight edge here, and this loop that we made with the chain is our buttonhole. Now, if you have a bigger, like I said at the beginning, this mug is a little bit bigger than this one. This one's more narrow in here. So, if you need to adjust it, measure, measure this around, and then before we do our decreases, measure here, and you can add more rows or take rows out depending on what is needed because you're going to be overlapping here. Okay, now, <clears throat> it won't affect anything if you add or subtract rows in here, but don't do it here where we're doing our decreases because we want that like that. Okay, so now we have our shape, we have it all made, and we wanna put our trim on. So what you're going to do is you're going to join, right here's where we stopped, so we're going to join our white yarn in right there, put your hook through. I say white yarn, whatever color trim that you want to use. Snug that up. I always chain one just to make sure it gets all snugged up. Okay, and we'll weave those ends in when we're done. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our, let me put see how many single crochets we need to put in that loop. Let me look on my notes. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to go in this loop. So you're going to put your hook through, and we're going to put four single crochets. There's one, two, three, Four. And you can see now our loop, and that's where our button will go through. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put the trim all the way around with single crochets. And what I do when I trim down the uh, edges of something that's not stitches but edge rows, I try to put one single crochet in the end of each row. Now, I watch as I go, and if I feel like there's too much space between my stitches, I'll take it out and add a stitch. And if I feel like it's too bunchy, I'll change it also. Okay, so I'm just putting one single crochet on the edge of each row. And sometimes you gotta push your hook in a little bit. Sometimes you gotta find that spot. One thing I do recommend is if you're working on a project that has big holes, like, like right here I've got a hole, don't go in the hole. Go in the stitch, like the last stitch of the row. It just gives you a little bit better look and a little bit more evenness. And you can see as I'm going, it's pretty even. It makes a nice row. We'll go ahead and stitch around. And what we'll do is we'll go down this side Whoops, pulled up some thread there. Try to go in there. Down the side. This white yarn is also the sparkle. I know I mentioned that. It just looks so pretty. All right, now when we get to this corner, we're going to put three single crochets in the corner. And the reason that we're gonna do that is because it will go, it'll move around the corner smoothly. Okay, so we're at the corner stitch here. And we want it to lay smoothly, so we're just gonna put one, two, three stitches in that corner. And of course, across the bottom, we have stitches to put our stitches in, so that's nice. And we can just put one stitch in each stitch across. All righty. One more, and now we're back at this corner. We wanna put three single crochets in that corner. 
so it lays pretty. And you can see how much better that lays when you get the three in the corner. You get a nice smooth around, straight and smooth around. And I will stitch right back up this side doing the same thing, even, evenly, evenly, <laughs> oh my goodness, evenly stitching across. These are a perfect thing to work on, I think, when you're trying to get some things ready. Also, these sell really great at... Um, Christmas um, craft shows. Get you some nice mugs, make some nice little sweaters for them. I think this would be a great item to have at a Christmas craft show. There we go. I had a little trouble getting in that one. Sometimes the stitches are a little tight, but that's okay. To me, it's more important for it to look smooth and even than... making it easy especially if I'm giving this as a gift I want it to be as pretty as I can make it well that depends I might make it really silly if I'm giving it to a family member because they know I'm pretty silly oh wouldn't this be neat to make it in blues and whites and find a frozen or an Olaf Christmas mug to give to a child for their Christmas cocoa what a great idea this one I have over here with, this, with the bear on it is blue. It would look pretty with some blue sparkle. Or even make it white sparkle and trim it in blue. All right, we're back up to where our buttonhole is. Remember, we started on our buttonhole. And so we're going to put a single crochet in there. And then we'll just join to that where we joined our white yarn in. We'll just join it in with a slip stitch. Oh, my scissors. There we go. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if my husband's been cutting stuff that's not supposed to be cut with my fabric scissors. All right. So now we have all these that need to be weaved in. I'm just going to hook them back here for now. Always uh, weave your ends in with, with your needle because that's the way you can get them to stay in there. And, but I'm just going to do that real quick just so that we can see the way it looks. Here's my other string I need to weave in. So you can see it. You can also make these out of cotton. I just remembered that. You can make these out of cotton as well. And they do have a sparkle cotton yarn that's red and white. I believe I saw it the other day. Okay, so here's your, your mug cozy. And what you want to do is put it, put it like this. Line up your where you want your button, and then sew your button on your flat end down here, and make sure that it buttons just fine. These silly strings are in the way. Just like that. I'm going to slide this one off so you can get an idea. Is this one I made in green? Your button goes down here, and then you wrap around and you button it just like that. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to make your little sleeves and how to attach those. And since I'm doing this in red, I'm going to stick with the red. We'll go ahead and pull that one out that I started with. All right, the sleeves are really, really simple. You're just going to chain nine. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And a little clue about if you chain tight, you really, when you're beginning a project that starts with a chain, always try to chain loose. But if you're someone who chains tightly, you might go up a hook size just because you want your first row, if you chain it too tight and then you put your stitches and you end up with a pucker. So anyway, just something to think about. All right, we're going to be stitching single crochets we chain nine, so we're going to stitch in the second chain from the hook and make eight single crochets. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, chain one does not count as a stitch, and then you're going to do this one single crochet in each single crochet, and you're going to do this for eight, I mean for seven rows, and then you're going to change to your white, and I've got one over here already ready for you. You're going to chain for se uh, single crochet seven rows, and then your last row you're going to, to single crochet in white, and that gives you the trim on your or whatever color you're using, just change your color so that you get a trim. And the way we form the uh, little arm is we just put the sides together and then we slip stitch, stitch across. And you don't have to turn it over because we're just going to flatten it out and put it like this. And make sure when you tie off, you leave a piece of string so that you can sew your sleeve on. And um, the way I do it, just like this. You place it, and I don't place it up and down. I place it kind of at an angle, and you just use this string, and you don't have to worry about closing this here because you're just going to use that string and basically just stitch across the top like that, and then you go back in behind, and then you want to put, because your sleeve will stick out like this, you want to put it down where you want it, and then use your string and tack that down with a couple, my yarn came off, with a couple of stitches just to hold it in place. And then you can choose a fun button to add to it, just like this one. Let's get our strings out of the way. Can't do a yarn project without a bunch of strings. All right, so we made our sweater cozy. Here's our buttonhole, a little string showing. We added just a fun button here to button our with our buttonhole. We made two sleeves. We sewed them on here, then we tacked them under here just so they'll stay put. You can go straight down, you can go in. I like them to kind of face in and then add a fun button. Now, if you want to add more buttons, you want to do all different colors, it's totally up to you. Okay, and then you choose a mug. I've got this nice one I got here. Isn't that cute? And you just wrap your mug cozy around, go through the, the uh, I call that the ear. I don't really know what that's called. It looks like an ear to me. Button it on, and you've got yourself a nice little mug cozy that you can give as a gift, keep for yourself. You could put some candy in it, decorate around your house, put little flowers in there or whatever you want. Isn't that fun? Well, this is a free pattern on my blog and I will put that pattern in the links for you so you'll have that. And I hope you'll make a bunch of these. Be sure and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And Merry Christmas in July.